Today's episode is brought to you by Patreon. If you're interested in supporting the show, go to patreon.com slash joshuarvelas and become a $2 backer today and get early access to the new episodes. I'll be leaving a link in the description down below, but for now, on to today's episode. You're listening to the Augment Experience Podcast. I'm your host, as usual, Josh Ravellis. I'm a student, musician, and a gamer at heart. Join me as I sit down every week to talk about all the latest news in the technology, business, and video game world. I hope you guys enjoy. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the show. My name is Josh Ellis. I am your host as usual, and obviously, welcome back to the show. Today's episode 190 of the show. And before I get started, a bit house current cut because, well, you guys know I like to do it around here, so it only makes sense that we do it. So let's just get on with the house cleaning, shall we? I do want to say thank you guys for coming back and listening to today's episode. It really does mean a lot to me. You guys constantly take time in your days to download these episodes, to share these episodes, to constantly keep letting me know how you feel, whether you like my stupid face or not. I do want to say thank you guys for coming back and listening or watching today's episode, whichever you prefer, because I like giving people options and well, you guys seem to appreciate that I give you options. So for that, I just wanted to say thank you guys for that. I really appreciate all the love and support. Thank you guys for helping us hit over. I think we're about to hit 2,700 total downloads. I think we're at like 2,670, somewhere around that range. So again, thank you guys so much for that. I really appreciate it. Hopefully we can hit over 3,000 at least by the end of the year, or if best case scenario, we could just hit it before the three year anniversary of the show. Outside of that, I also want to say thank you to the Patreon backers for supporting the show because, well, you guys are great and you constantly keep supporting the show. So thank you for that. And if you want to become a Patreon backer, you can just click the link down below and become a Patreon backer. And you guys are probably also seeing like I'm wearing a hoodie for once while doing these episodes. I just got my new hoodie in the mail. I'll explain more about it at the very end. But I do want to make sure that we have a little bit of fun today since, well, it is Techtober. This is usually the time of the year where a lot of the really big tech products, and I have my notes right here under me, where it's just very interesting because Techtober has always been the big time of the year when big tech products come out with. And so far this week, we've already had plethora of great products and we can't talk about all of them, but I primarily want to talk about two specific products talking about the m1 pro and the m1 max and specifically the 14 inch macbook pro and the 16 inch macbook pro the reason i think it's more appropriate to talk about these two products in comparison to say the pixel 6 that at the time this recording has already come out well at the time of this recording the event has already happened and we, you know it's already available for pre-order and everything like that but we're going to talk about the new MacBooks because these are the biggest redesign for the MacBooks we've seen in a while. And besides some of the performance claims, I'm not that big of a fan of the design. And let me explain a little bit. So at the Apple events that was hosted on October 18th, they not only showed off the new AirPods, new colors for the HomePod mini, which no one cares about. And then they also showed off the 14 inch MacBook Pro and the 16 inch MacBook Pro and also the two new processors, which in my notes say it's the M1 Pro and the M1 Max. And I'm gonna elaborate a little bit what those mean exactly. So the M1 Pro, primarily it says in terms of the CPU, it now has 10 cores compared to the previous cores on the regular M1. It now has up, six, has up to 16 GPU cores, but it also has up to 32 gigabytes of RAM. We've been asking this for a while now because we've wanted more RAM on these m1 max because i've always said that 16 gigabytes just isn't enough for actual professional workflows especially with the whole like memory swapping debacle that people have been worried about regarding the m1 max and how like the ram is limited and that i just feel like memory swapping happens more often so it's going to degrade your ssd faster so the fact that now these mac pro i'd say specifically the macbook pros that use the m1 pro these naming schemes are absolute stupid i'm just saying this right now the fact that now we have up to 32 gigs of RAM is really good. But then we have the M1 Max, which is the big, like the best way that was explained to me, especially during the presentation and explained to everybody was that the M1 Pro and the M1 Max are upscaled versions of the original M1 chip. And they're obviously much bigger and you know, with bigger comes more bandwidth. And also in this case, the M1 Max has the same 10 core CPU. It also has up to 32 GPU cores compared to the 16. So it doubles the, C the GPU core count of the M1 Pro. 
but now it also doubles the RAM count by going up to 64 gigs of RAM, which I think that's really good, especially for pro products, which that's what these chips are primarily focused on is professional users and not just the everyday Joe, or in this case, high school schmucks that think it's just cool to have a MacBook Pro to do your notes in class when you obviously don't need that much, but who am I to judge, you know, cause you know, we like to bully those little kids. I'm kidding. We don't really bully them. We just, it, I know it sounds weird and bad to say it that way, but it's just like, man, you ever realize like how much money is wasted in that entire exchange? If you think about it, like why would you buy a MacBook Pro just to take your notes in class that you don't even pay attention to begin with? So it's just like, Hey man, I could have gave you a solution. It's called a uh, $2 notebook at the store with a box with a $1 bag of pencils. Kind of saves you a couple thousand dollars right there, my friend. Yeah, that or just buy a Chromebook, to be honest. Good Chromebooks are really good for taking notes and just in general, just if you don't really need so much heavy power or if you're not doing anything that requires all that power, then I'd say having a Chromebook is more acceptable. But we have these new chips. We have the 14 inch MacBook Pro now. The first new sizing of the MacBook since the 16 inch model was added. And then the redesign or the I'd say redesign and refresh of the 16 inch MacBook Pro that people have been waiting on because this has always been the bigger professional tool that people just generally love. And when it comes to the design, I have some concerns. First off, I don't think it's bright idea. I don't think it's a bright idea primarily this to praise Apple for adding ports back when they were the same companies that said that getting rid of the ports were good, that we need thinner laptops, that we don't need these ports anymore, that they're antiquated, they're old. And yet now they add them back and now everyone's like, hooray, Apple for doing the most bare minimum shit I've ever seen in my life. Cause I'm like, wow, it took you guys this long to add ports back that were actually useful. And you didn't even give us that many good ports. You gave us three new, well, now we have three Thunderbolt ports. We have HDMI back, we have, and the SD card back. And MagSafe back, because you guys got rid of that before because you thought it was pointless and now you brought it back because you're starting to realize, hey, it's, you know, we actually like it. And so I'm like, it just kind of feels like on some lane, on some levels, it's just Apple's way of just completely shitting all over the people that bought into the Johnny Ive design language. That was the 2016 to the 2020 MacBook Pros or specifically, you know, the 2016 MacBook Pro going into the, you know, the first M1 Mac. It's just man they really just shout over shout all over you guys they really just admitted that that design in the words of a wise man we're complete dog shit because just being honest here i don't think making your laptops thinner lighter and having a much bigger issue for thermal throttling was a bright idea i'm just being honest with you i'm glad they finally realized that that was a stupid idea I wish they would figure that out sooner, but that's not the only biggest offense that I have with this new design. I think the next big issue is the fact that the damn thing has a notch. I know some people say, Josh, it seems like you're just blowing things out of proportion. Like we finally got a 10 AP webcam, but they had to do the notch. And I'm like, yeah, laptops that have 10 AP webcams didn't need to do it that way, bud. Uh, Dell XPS, uh, well, not the Dell XPS, specifically the Microsoft Surface lineup they didn't need to do that now granted they also have a three by two aspect ratio but still like they didn't need to put the notch especially because my impression before they said anything was that they were going to put face id on the macbooks which i think would have been a great answer to windows hello because windows hello is a very popular feature with a lot of windows laptops because using the webcam for just better security and authentication. So I was like, okay, we can, I can be okay with the notch. Cause that was always the rationale for having the notch was that it houses the, the camera system that actually allows face ID to happen. But these new MacBooks don't have face ID. They don't have the hardware built in. Now, granted when we do break, when they do breakdowns and stuff, then we'll find out if it actually does have the face ID hardware. If it doesn't have it in there, then I, then at that point, there's no point in having the notch. I think it was just stupid. I think it was a waste. They should have just, at least made it like you you don't lose anything with just making the bezel at least a little bit like thinner and then just still have a black bar going up there but i guess like they're like oh it gives you more screen real estate when it really doesn't like you clearly see in a lot of examples like i'm even looking on the website like they clearly show it cutting into your software like it's just 
I don't see the point of adding a notch to the MacBook. Like I get it, it's a bigger display and I get on smartphones, it's much more easier because one, it's a smaller display and it's you know right in front of your face. But it's just like, if it doesn't have any practical use, why would you do it? It's like when Android manufacturers started putting notches on their phone, even though they didn't need to do it. They just did it because Apple did it because it, it made them look like Apple. And it's just like, you know, I'm glad that they brought the ports back. I think it's wonderful. But I don't think they should be getting praise for bringing the ports back when this should have been, you know, common sense. And the same thing, like, think about all the people that bought all the adapters for their MacBooks, too. Like, man, people that spent, like, 80 to to $100 on those really nice adapters just feel like complete idiots because they just gave you the ports back on the laptop. And they also realize, like, making these things thicker because, yeah, with beefier hardware, you're going to need... And if you want better battery life, you got to make these things thicker if you want better ports. And... Another issue that kind of bothered me a little bit when talking about or even really thinking about the M1 Max or specifically like the 16 inch and the 14 inch MacBook Pro is what's really going to suck is if these new laptops have better supports for dual display or like more displays because that was one of the biggest issues that people had with the M1 Max like specifically with the 13 inch MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air that they had issues when it came to running multi multiple displays that there was clearly issues. So if these new MacBooks don't have that issue, I think that's just a slap in the face to a lot of people who bought the 13-inch MacBook Pro and the 14 and the 13-inch MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air because they clearly realized it was an issue or it would be hard to say like cuz it wouldn't make much sense because there's Windows laptops that have much less performance or clearly a ton of less performance than these M1 Macs and yet they can easily handle four displays no problem and yet these macbooks are struggling or specifically the 13 inch macbook pro and the macbook air were struggling to have multiple display support and so if these new macbooks have good multiple dis display support then i think that'd be i think that'd be pretty shitty i think that would it would it would leave a sour taste in a lot of people that bought the the m1 max but at the end of the day in terms of design language I like that they're making them thicker. I think they should have done this from the get-go. They should be giving us ports back. I still find it very interesting though, in the grand scheme of things, that they didn't put the ethernet port back on the MacBook. I think that was a lost opportunity. I think they really should have just put the ethernet port back on the MacBook, especially because people are starting to realize, hey, wire connections are still better than wireless, no matter what you try to justify. Like, yeah, a wireless connection is great for convenience, but if we're genuinely talking about like actual performance, yes it is true that you know wired connections are better i would rather have a wired connection or at least have the option to have a wired connection but i think it's also kind of stupid in the grand scheme of things the fact that the notch is stupid i will say this and i will always say this like you can get mad at me you could try to defend apple this is one thing you just have to admit you can't defend this it's bullshit they had no reason to put a notch on the damn macbook they did it just because they could do it doesn't mean they should have done it and it just looks terrible I don't care what you say. It just looks bad. It does not look good. It does not look, it does not make logical sense to put it on the MacBook. It doesn't like some people try to say, oh, you gain more screw real estate. No, you don't. It doesn't matter because it doesn't serve a purpose. The reason the notch existed to begin with was to give room for the face ID sensor. It wasn't there just to be an aesthetic because it didn't make sense. Like if it was just an aesthetic, they would have done it a long time ago. It's just... It's just stupid. And the display, I will say this though, the fact that they're talking about that it's a mini LED with 120 Hertz refresh rate, which is kind of nice because given that now the new Surface laptops are doing that or specifically the Surface Studio, I think it's really nice that they're doing that. I think adding higher refresh rates on these more ultra book or professional style machines makes sense because gaming laptops have had high refresh rates for a while now, but it's not like how ProMotion and like, you know, the LTPO panels where, you know, it's able to scale up to scale down to 10 scale up to 120 instead of like the constant 144 165 on gaming laptops and stuff like that i think it's really nice i think it makes sense especially for the ultrabook market to have this kind of variety but now let's get on with the performance part because i will say this now if anyone tries to tell you at this moment, at the time of this recording, before anybody has ever properly even tested these damn new chips, to say that these are the greatest laptops ever made, that these nothing comes close to it, 
I'm sorry, but they're damn fools because they have not tested these machines. And I will still say this because the same thing happened with the original M1 is that there's clearly issues with this processor and not in terms of performance, but there's obviously connectivity issues. Like there's clearly issues. There's issues of Bluetooth. Like there's still birth pains that come with switching architectures. We know this, but this comes with experience. This comes with time and actual proper testing and not just like day or a week testing these damn things. I would hold off. Now, do I think Intel is going to be, I don't think Intel is going to get back into selling MacBooks or at least being anywhere close to being a supplier for chips for my, for Apple in this case, because clearly Apple is doing perfectly fine without them. Now, are there issues with these new chips? Who knows? Because we don't know. No one's ever actually possibly tested these things. Now, granted, Apple's internal testers have, but in terms of us as actual consumers using these things, I'm going to willing to bet or, okay, I'll put it like this. I'm willing to bet that there's going to be issues. I will bet you and I guarantee you in terms of performance, I think they're going to do great. I just don't want people thinking that these are the be all end all machines because these machines are not meant for everybody. These machines are primarily designed for professionals. This is not for the average Joe. This is not for average schmucks like you and me, even though, yes, I do a lot of video editing, but I have my custom PC for that. I don't use my laptop. Like I have an Acer Swift X. Like this laptop is good for 1080p video editing and photo editing. I don't use it for that because I use it for school. These laptops are not made for college students. These laptops are not made for, you know, people that just want to screw around or have a MacBook. No, these are professional tools for professionals. This is used for professional workflows that require all the power that these, you know, new processors and all the more, like the more RAM, the better displays. All of this is for professionals because I've always said that, yes, macOS, when it's originally designed, or how they've always advertised macOS is that it's always for creatives. That is the premier platform for creatives to create their content or what they do for a living. Yes, a lot of people love using Windows workstations. That's just the cold, hard reality. A lot of people still prefer using Windows because there's a lot of specialized hardware or specifically a lot of specialized software that relies on Windows because it doesn't run on macOS. And it doesn't matter how much you try to make it run on macOS because it won't run on macOS. It just won't run on a Mac. And so that's why people have a lot of Windows workstations. There's a reason why a lot of systems rely heavily on Windows instead of macOS. Because even though, yes, macOS has its perks, it's still not 100% perfect. It's still not the be all end all that people try to make it out to be. Because that's the whole point of people having their biases with operating system. Like obviously someone that's been using Mac their whole life is gonna say that Windows is trash and that's dog shit. But I'm like, well, people are trying to say that they want gaming on macOS. That's not the point of macOS. macOS is, a, is literally a, is designed for creatives. It is not meant for gaming. It is not meant for any of that shit. Windows is much better for gaming and developers don't want to develop for macOS. It's not because that the hardware is not capable. It's just, they don't give a shit about macOS. They know that they're going to get more people on Windows than if they were to use macOS. Cause obviously with Windows, you can do much more stuff. You have much more variety, better, you know, not better parts, but cause this is what people don't understand is with, when it comes to desktop stations, Nobody cares about power draw. Yes, is power draw important? Yes, because it will depend on what kind of power supply you have or how much your electric bill is gonna be. But in the grand scheme of things, no one really gives a shit nine times out of 10. I'm just being honest with you because the same people that say they claim about power draw on PCs are the ones with 3090s in their computers and probably two of them. So you clearly don't care about power draw or they're using a Threadripper or they're using a 5950X or they're using some Intel chip the list just goes on and on guys like power draw does not matter on actual desktop pcs it does not matter as much as people try to say now laptops i will say it is important because of battery life because battery life is good now i love the battery life on my acer swift x this battery life is really good to me i get easily 10 hours 8 to 10 hours easily especially when i'm like working my desk shift and i still have 80 percent after using it for three hours straight of just watching videos, you know, writing up papers and things like that and better battery mode, having 80%. Hey, that's good battery life to me, man. I love that. Now, when I was, when I had a MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro, I loved the battery life because clearly I could go the whole day and I'd barely be at 50, just being honest here. But in terms of performance with these suckers, we just have to wait and see. I do like that they have more RAM. I think for professional workflows and having a bigger GPU cores or specifically more GPU cores and more CPU cores. Yes, I think these machines will perform very well. I just don't want people to think that these are the be all end alls for everything. I think these will have a niche market. I think these will be good for the people that actually use this stuff like YouTubers or 
like filmmakers or anybody that maybe photo editors i probably like eh, like they don't really need it all that power but i guess like it'd be good for them too because they're also working professionals too which i kind of sucks because i'm also shitting on myself because i'm a, a photographer too so hey you know i'm just shitting on myself but at the end of the day it's going to be very interesting i want to see these things actually push their limits i want to see people actually push these things to do something incredible i want to see how audio engineers actually like this because i have yet to hear any audio engineer talk about the new m1 max in general like not even the like the m1 the m1 mini the the refresh to the iMac or you know the 13 inch MacBook Pro the MacBook Air having our drops from audio engineers regarding how they're liking the new silicon even with this one with the better more RAM better GPUs better CPUs you know better SSDs you know better connectivity like I haven't heard anything from them but at the end of the day I'm excited for these new MacBooks I think this is the most excited people have been I'm excited to see how they go about doing the mac pro if that thing will have its own dedicated card or it's just going to be all a system on a chip i think the mac pro is probably going to be the most exciting thing when it comes to how they're going to tackle doing it when it comes to the m1 i think they could you know they might use an m1 max or they might use something bigger or go even further beyond like uh like let's just say a stupid name like m1 pro max because the naming scheme on these chips is absolutely stupid like I would have just said call it the M1 Mac, M1X or call it the M2 or M2, you know, call it something else, you know, like at least something else. But that's just my two cents on the matter, guys. Like I, I like the event. I like what I saw. I don't like the notch on the MacBooks. I still think the fact that these things don't even have face ID to begin with is stupid. I think that having the notch on there and no face ID is stupid. I think it's counterintuitive. I think it just makes the, it just makes it look ugly. That's just my opinion. I like that they're putting the ports back. I'm not going to praise Apple for putting the ports back because they were the ones that originally said they should have got rid of them. So this company's kind of brain dead sometimes. I'm just being honest with you here. That kind of brain dead, like, you know, make up your mind guys. And in terms of performance, like I said, I wouldn't trust a damn person's word saying that these things are the greatest thing since sliced bread they have not tested these things they have no basis on stand on they're literally just going by vague performance numbers that apple gives in their presentations because that's what they always like to do and that's the whole point of what we do what we do here is to challenge the marketing claims of these damn companies because how ironic i'm a marketing major and i could see through this bullshit from a mile away but that's really all i have you guys i hope you guys enjoyed today's episode i really enjoyed doing this one because i just had a lot of fun like it's not me ranting it's just more of just being honest with you guys like there's a lot going on here and we obviously have to see how it plays out over time and really put Apple to the test here, to be honest here, to be honest with you clearly, because that's all I really can do is just be honest with you guys. Cause I have no reason to lie to you. I have no stake in this damn company. I could care less. <laughs> like, yeah, I have some of their products. Now I will still say firmly this. I still think I would never buy a Mac. I think I could never hundred percent switch to Mac OS for what I do. I just like my custom PC so much. Like I get so much out of it and, it just works and i like having the ability to the right to repair is another big thing with it so it's gonna be very interesting to see how this plays out guys i'm not gonna lie with you guys especially when you think about the right to repair but that's a conversation for another day but as always thank you guys so much for your time i really appreciate it i hope well if you like today's episode leave a like leave a dislike if you don't like it and let me know what you think in the comment section down below what how do you guys feel about the new 14 inch macbook pro and the 16 inch macbook pro do you like the new processes do you not like the new process could you probably not give a shit to begin with but at the end of the day, I had fun and I know you guys are probably going to ask me like the hoodie. So I ended up buying, okay. I know people are going to call me a hype piece for this. I ended up buying the Yeezy Gap hoodie and it just came in the mail today. So at the time it's recording, it came in the mail and I'm not going to lie. This is a super comfortable hoodie. I love this hoodie so much and it's going to be my premium hoodie uh, going forward. My premier hoodie I'm going to use with a lot of my outfits. So I'm really excited. Um, it's a really comfy hoodie. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Like it's going to go good because you guys know I, li I have Yeezys. I, ha I love my Yeezys. They're the most comfortable shoes I've ever owned. But as always, guys, thank you guys so much for your time. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. I'm not going to be doing another episode this week due to the fact that I have interviews. I have my big interview on Thursday with Epsilon. Epsilon so please give me your thoughts and prayers for that because it's a really long interview. It's like three hours long. So, you know, you're, hopefully your boys got this. But thank you guys so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. Again, if you like this episode, leave a like, leave a dislike, share this episode with your friends or whoever wants to listen to this damn show. I'm just being honest with you guys. But 
to Patreon backers, thank you for supporting the show. You'll get to hear and see this episode early. But as always, guys, don't do anything dumb. I hope you guys have yourselves a wonderful week and weekend. Please, as always, guys, take care of everyone around you. Please be kind and respectful to those around you because the world is still a weird place, guys. But I will see you guys next week. And I love you guys to death. Bye, guys. Hey there. Thank you for listening to today's episode. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day and listening to today's episode. If you're interested in supporting the show, whether it be financially, clicking the follow button, or just sharing the episode, it all works for me, guys. Thank you guys so much for your time, and I love you guys to death.